Welcome back to Animation Technically, and today we're going to be looking at Minotaurs. From Dawn of Titans, a game I worked on for quite some time, and this was one of two classes of characters that I got to create. What I'm describing here obviously wasn't made in Unreal or Unity, but the methods I'm describing here that work for this will work for those game engines as well. If you're thinking of doing something like this, and by this I mean making a group of characters that all work off the same rigs and animations but uh, have different skinning or bodily designs etc this isn't retargeting this is purely working off the same rig uh, and retargeting i can cover in another example later but unlike many characters uh, this was the first one made um, and because of that i actually stripped it down to start off with and made a template and having a template character as your base character and your base rig uh, speeds up a lot because it means you have a skinning template you can use to copy across to new characters that come through. And in Unreal specifically, then you can make this your base rig, as you might see from this. Um, I've added lots of additional joints specifically for this version of the character because we use rigid body dynamics in order to control all the bits that don't have animation. The core rig has animation that's motion captured, which lets you iterate through animation a lot more quicker. You can make things out and then set them together, as you can see in the example here. Um, it looks a lot more better and was you know, in the scope of what we wanted to do. Obviously it requires a little bit of cleanup, which was done through Motion Builder which is our proxy for getting the animation onto the character in Maya. The two of them work hand in hand as software fairly well. And um, Motion Builder, as I've said before, gives you a lot more animation options than traditional um, traditional Maya HIK does. And obviously it accounts for the fact that this is far from a human structure, even though it's humanoid in appearance. These bits are all done in engine. Um, using Morphine, which is an offshoot of Euphoria. Um, but again, in Unreal, you have the rigid body dynamics, you have similar solutions in Unity and most other game engines, or you can bake them down using N-Cloth uh, solutions in Maya, or you can use Jiggle Bones in Blender, whatever your preference is. There's plenty of ways to do this. Um, we just did it in Engine for this particular game, but there's many, many ways you can do it. There's a face rig as well, as you can see, so there's lots of different things here. Obviously, because it's just a core rig, Armour does not have its own bones to support it, so there is a little bit of stretching here and there to make sure everything fits uh, the rig it's made to, while obviously faces are one for one copied. Not every bone has a use on each character, some of them have more. Uh, it was just making sure there was enough to carry over and work for the designs we had coming. Here's one of the examples uh, I can show where we have a completely different character. You can see how the general body structure is similar and it all fits the rig. The underlying body is the same, but this replaces armor with a more fungal based design. So skinning has to be different to support it. Obviously armor in different places, which means the way the skinning is propagated across the character is different in places. We've swapped out the bones that are around the sash for new bones that support the additional hanging cloth. Uh, we've got two layers of it in this, as well as bits of cloth around the side as well. So when it goes into the game, the dynamics would be set up differently, as they will do for each different variant of a character. As you can see, you get the general idea of each new character that comes along. We do something slightly different on the setup in order to support... Um, whatever the, the remit of the character was. Sometimes they have big solid areas, sometimes they have different parts. And obviously VFX applied in game as well would have been different too, but that wasn't anything I did mostly. But you can see how different designs are driven off the same core rig. And sometimes that works in inverse as well. So in this case, we've got a character that actually has a lot less to him overall. Um, everything still works as it should. It's just a case of, again, because there's bone, there's nothing really happening on the face skinning in that part, and there's less overall for the character. So dynamics are streamlined to here, and the general skin, the skinning template covers most of the body. I particularly like this one, actually, as a good example, because this is one of the times when you can actually see that the skinning template that was made actually covers everything. There's no additional dangly bits hanging off, uh, and everything covers most of it fine. However, parts of it have been 
made rigid instead to support the you know keeping the body as rigid as possible you can see when the body opens as well we try to get a nice even split so there's as little stretch on the the rock part of the body as possible it's all down to how you choose to do your skinning um again this has to support the animations that are played with it so it's not like you can say well these parts of the skin will always be rigid this part will always be soft you can't guarantee that because you're not doing a completely unique character everything is shared and you can't always get a perfect uh, result with every single character sometimes you have to cheat a little bit here and there but bear in mind that when it comes to general body and torso movement there isn't as much movement as what you see on the arms and so it's these parts of the body that have to be done correctly it's where the majority of the movement is trying to keep the stretch to the important part and um, also note as well i have obviously have twist bones set up as a part of the character same with the arms um for the purposes of this because we motion captured the animation the twist animation to support it is actually added in engine as well and the same in the dynamics again you don't have to and you can pull this data from your motion capture but it's another way you can do it if you want to of course with all the animation in mind and done you then have to get it through into game um, and obviously that involves setting up each character from the core template just like you would in unreal uh, setting up dynamics as well for the dangly parts of the clothing setting up the animation networks which also comes as a part of it as well if you're setting up a new character or a new class of character depending on what kind of game you're making uh, lots of testing in between to make sure different solutions work obviously you want cloth to react how cloth would you want armor to react how it should so if it's heavy it should be heavy if it's light it should be light you should have that flow correctly you have to have the collision spheres that they collide with match the dimensions of your character so that it looks correct and everything moves how you'd expect it to move otherwise it's going to break the illusion in game especially when it comes to uh, code generated animation which dynamics essentially are but you can see here the finished examples on the the seven different minotaur characters that we had obviously the the physical, then one for each other class, earth, ice, fire, poison, void. Um, and there you go. And lightning, of course, to finish off. So that's it. A little breakdown and a deep dive a little bit further into most characters as this was a little bit more than the rig. It was a whole series of characters on the same skeleton, uh, which I'm sure many technical animators will probably do during their career. And I hope it was interesting and see you next time.